in this example of convolution that is the discrete time convolution again we are given an input that is x of n which is having a value of 1 from 0 to 4 and then we have the impulse response h of n that is giving us a value alpha raised to power n from 0 to uh, 6 so basically we have 0 to 6 and we are asked to compute the output that is y of n the output y of n is computed by the convolution sum that is x of k h of n minus k where k is from minus infinity to infinity if we convert this so uh, from x of n to x of k so everything will remain the same and nothing would change right so this would be 0 and this would be 4 so this one if we change it to k and we have an h of k as we desire over here so we would have an increasing function this would be 6 and you would have values from 0 to 6 but h of minus k that we need from here so this would mean that we have a zero here and then on the other side we would have we would be getting an increasing value so this would be minus six but what we actually need is we need h of n minus k that is this value would be added with n rather than zero now we have n this would be n minus one and so on we would have n minus six so this is the greatest value and then we would have decreasing values right so h of n minus k over here we had alpha of n so this would be equal to alpha of n minus k that is if you change the argument from n to n minus k so the, uh, the value of n over here would change to n minus k uh, for this function so this is x of k and this is basically represented over here these are the two functions that we need since we have flipped the impulse response h of n over here right so we would be moving this from left to right right and we would be looking on the overlap area with x of k so one way to do is uh, you change the value incrementally that is you set n equal to uh, minus a 5 then minus 4 minus 3 minus 2 and onward but that is going to take a lot of time so it would be convenient if you make a subset of values and then use some intuition to develop the summation function so this uh, is something that we're going to do next now this function is expressed over here and similarly this function is expressed over here so as a first step if the value of n is less than 0 so this means that there is no overlap right if there is no overlap so this would mean y of n is equal to 0 in short we have covered all the values from minus infinity to minus 1 next uh, we are going to say that n is greater than or equal to 0 that is now we are moving away from the negative values and we let the value of n cross the zero barrier but we limit it to 4 right why do we limit it to 4 if the value of n goes beyond 4 so this would mean that you would have some values which are overlapping and some values which are not overlapping right so this summation function we would not be able to develop as the first step we let this h of n minus k move towards right that is cross the zero boundary but we fix the header that is n to be less than or equal to 4 so that is n is less than or equal to 4 so in other way we can write 0 is less than or equal to n and is less than or equal to 4 so the output y of n in a summation form now this is a very important summation again we would have x of k h of n minus k 
but right now the summation is not starting from minus infinity in fact it would be starting from this point why is it starting from this point because anything less than this point is zero right so we can start at zero but importantly where is this summation terminating so if we say it is terminating at four so this means that this has moved until the fourth point that is 0 1 2 3 and 4 but that is not the case h of n minus k is moving incrementally towards right side and it is locked until fourth value right so it, by which symbol it is increasing it is increasing by the symbol n where n is locked until 4 right so rather than writing 4 which would be wrong we have to write n but note that this n is locked from 0 to 4 right so the summation if the value of n is over here if the value of n is over here so this means that this one value which is over here now would only be multiplying with one value so you won't have summation per se you just have multiplication of two discrete values so in the present case we have these three values that is 0 1 and 2 they are multiplicating with 0 1 and 2 these three values 0 1 2 and 3 so the summation would be until 3 but that summation can go on until uh, the value of n which would be less than or equal to 4 so by this summation we have covered five values of n again i would reiterate that it is very important to find the range and the summation so until here we have covered from minus infinity to 4 right so naturally we would move n greater than 4 so if n is greater than 4 so this means that if this is greater than 4 so this is moving in this direction it is leaving 4 so this is actually represented over here 0 1 2 3 and 4 so fourth value is over here and it has left it so the header has left the value 4 but at the same time we are going to lock the tail which is n minus 6 to be less than 0 so why do we lock the tail to be less than 0 or less than or equal to 0 so if n minus 6 goes beyond 0 right so we would have some non overlapping region between x of k and h of n minus k so this is the reason we let the header or the head pass the value of 4 but we uh, keep n minus 6 locked to 0 so other way around we can write 4 is less than n which is less than or equal to 6 and hence the output y of n again it would be a summation x of k h of n minus k in this range whether you set n equal to 5 or 6 right so these are the only two options when you set n equal to 5 or n equal to 6 so in both cases all of this would be overlapping with this so this means that our k is starting at 0 and it is terminating at 4 this is because in this range of n x of k and h of n minus k are always overlapping so note the difference when n was between 0 and 4 and when n is 5 or 6 right so we had a termination point in terms of a symbol n and over here we have a crisp value that is 4 so next when the tail n minus 6 leaves 0 n minus 6 is going to leave 0 right beyond this point so this would be moving towards right but at the same time i would like my n minus 6 that is the n minus 6 which is the tail of x or h of n minus k to be locked with the last value of x of k and the last value is 4 so i would let it move towards right but lock its tail to the terminal value of x of k that is n minus 6 locked to 4 or other way around we can write n is greater than 6 and this would go over here 
n is less than or equal to 10. Now, interestingly, what is going to be the summation? So let's start with the terminal value. We know that if it is moving towards right, this point is going to come into play because we are locking n minus 6 to 4, right? So if we are moving towards the right direction, the summation can go up to 4 and beyond 4, the values are 0. So this summation is 4, terminating at 4. But what is the starting point? Like we have a symbol value over here, the summation is going up to n. So similarly, the tail value n minus 6 is incrementally increasing towards right, right? So this summation is going to start from n minus 6 and is going to terminate at 4. So n minus 6 is moving towards right. So as it moves towards right, the overall summation or the number of terms that would be summed up would become less and less. We would have only one summation when n minus 6 is equal to 4. That is this term comes over here and n minus 6, this term overlaps with the last term over here. Right? So that would be just one value or one, uh, one term but no summation. But anything less than that we would have two or more terms that would be summed up. Lastly when n minus 6, this goes beyond 4. Right, n minus 6 goes beyond 4, that is, n is greater than 10. If it goes beyond 4, there is no overlap between x of k and h of n minus k. In this case, again, y of n is equal to 0. So, once we have all of these summations, next uh, we would like to solve further. So, x of k, you would uh, observe that all the values are 1. So this is not going to play any role. So one would be multiplied with h of n minus k. So this summation k is equal to 0 to n. 1 multiplied by h of n minus k. But h of n minus k is alpha n minus k. So you would have alpha of n minus k. And similarly, this would convert to alpha n minus k. And this would also convert to alpha of n minus k. Next, we are going to simplify all of these summations to find closed form expressions. So for uh, the remaining part of this example, we are going to use a geometric series. And for that, if the summation k starts from 0 to n and we have a variable alpha to the power k. So the outcome of this expression is simply 1 minus alpha raised to power n plus 1 over 1 minus alpha. So previously we had five cases. The first case was when n is less than zero. And in that case, the output is zero. Then we have a case two when n is between zero and four. Case three when n is greater than four and it is uh, limited to six. Next, when n is greater than six and it is limited to 10. And finally, the fifth case is when n is greater than 10. So for n greater than 10, again, it's zero. So for these three cases, we have to solve further and we have to get out of this summation, right? So we have to find a closed form expression. So uh, previously in case two, we uh, stopped at k zero to n alpha n minus k. So note that this summation belongs to k, right? The variable of summation is k and not n. So we can extract out n alpha n from this summation. This is something that we have done over here. We have extracted alpha raised to power n over here and rest of the summation is expressed over here that is k 0 to n alpha raised to power minus k so we have uh, wrote alpha raised to power minus 1 and then whole thing is k right so this thing is expressed over here and alpha power n is uh, moved out of the summation right but note that this whole thing is actually a geometric series we can solve this by means of a geometric series this expression is solved uh, by means of geometric series to obtain 1 minus alpha power minus 1 to the power n plus 1 which is coming from here and similarly in the denominator we have 1 minus alpha is to power minus 1 right so this gives us uh, the expression that uh, that we desire for the second case right in case 3 the summation is starting at 0 and going to 4 and again we have alpha raised to power n minus k right again we can extract out alpha raised to power n because 
n is not a variable of summation so we have alpha power n and rest of the things are appearing over here as before and on this again we use a geometric series uh, so this 4 will convert to 5 that is 1 minus alpha minus 1 raised to power n plus 1 so n was 4 over here so it will become 5 and similarly in the denominator we simply have 1 raised to 1 minus alpha raised to power minus 1 so we got the desired expressions for case 2 and 3 and finally in case 4 uh, the summation is starting from n minus 6 uh, and it's until 4 and then again we have alpha n minus k right so as a first step the geometric series needs that uh, the starting point of summation should be 0 so we need to make this 0 and to make this 0 we let m we define a new variable of summation that is m and this is simply k minus n plus 6 so k minus n plus 6 so this is going to give us a summation which is from m equal to 0 it will terminate at a point previously k was equal to 4 right so if we set k equal to 4 so we would have 6 plus 4 which is 10 minus n so we would have 10 minus n so the summation of m variable is starting from 0 and it is terminating at 10 minus n and similarly we would have that alpha over here and n minus k right so over here we have k minus n so this means that if we bring n to the left side n and k also to the left side so we would have 6 minus m so we would have 6 minus m and again this 6 is not a summation variable right so we can bring this out that is alpha raised to power 6 and then we would have a summation m is equal to 0 to 10 minus n alpha minus 1 raised to power m and on this we can again use the geometric series to obtain alpha 6 1 minus alpha inverse over here this is added with 1 right so over here we have 10 minus n so if we add 1 over here so we would have 11 minus n divided by 1 minus alpha inverse so this is the closed form expression in which we have come out of the summation and this is not in a summation form now so hence we have solved all the cases from 1 to 5. So as a summary we have the output y of n expressed in terms of a case function when the values of n are negative right and when the values of n is until 10 and beyond right. So for all values of n this is going to be our output for the predefined input and the impulse function h of n.